Hello Tubesters, it's Gav. Welcome to another one of my videos. Today we're looking at some Perry Miniatures 28mm plastic British Hussars from the Napoleonic period. Napoleonic Wars. Did I get my words out right then? Uh, so there'll be photographs at the end as, as always. I don't know when you see this guy here particularly well. But uh, only two painted. Hopefully I'll put that in the description so people don't think they're being mugged. Uh, two painted and one horse. And we'll go into this little horse in a bit. So each uh, horse uh, is taking me, and that's including the accoutrements, the tack as they call it, that's a horsey word I believe, uh, but yeah you know saddles, uh, sheepskin cover, all that type of stuff. Uh, they take, they're taking me about four, four and a half hours a piece uh, to paint. I'm literally doing one at a time, put two on the desk, paint one, so because I'm doing each horse differently um, and uh, it's just taking a bit of time uh, these are all bays that I'm doing at the moment I'm probably going to the next one I'm, doing, I'm having another bay but the, the darker one uh, I might put a few not so much black horses in there but, but more darker ones I keep looking over there sorry figures are there uh, I'm literally taking each horse as it comes. Uh, I'm taking uh, references from, I, I always, to be honest with you, I go s normally straight to our household cavalry uh, and King Street uh, Royal Horse Artillery uh, because they're real horses and they're done up to, uh, you've got to take, bear in mind obviously they're not on campaign, <laughs> they're ultra, ultra shiny, uh, but uh, all the horses here Obviously, I, I'm not the world's greatest painter. Uh, I keep trying to improve with each, when even in this case, each horse I do, which is why I'm throwing so much time at them. Uh, so, the markings and bays, bays, as you know, probably you probably know this, but they have a, a black tips on their ears. Uh, they can be a, a whole spectrum of colours. I'm not going to get into because I don't know enough about horses to really start talking about that. Uh, I'm only replicating what I'm seeing, but there's all different types of bays, and uh, one of the big, big standouts is at some point they'll have black on the legs, I believe. Uh, some have it real jet black, which I've done on the one horse, which we'll see in a minute. The others are more merged in with the, the main colour of the horse. I'm not even going to say what colours they're supposed to be, because I just go at them. I've got an idea in my mind, I put certain colours out on my palette. Or bottles on the desk beforehand and I just work through them and uh, they're not so much a mishmash I've got an idea of what I'm going to use but um, yeah it, it just it's just a suck it and see type of thing really uh, which is more fun obviously the riders uh, I've been painting them on what I'm not I normally paint cavalrymen on the horses but I decided to go with a different option this time and paint them on the wire that I would use sometimes doing one in 35s now, but they're not stuck in bongs I've just been holding them on the loop round or they are a large size uh, paper clips uh, they're cheap um, and they I just open them up and I'll snip down them all the as I save my plastic half my modeling I save my the off cuts that I do off these as well the, the off the paper clips they get saved because they all get used at some point for pinning and different bits and pieces but uh, the riders are pinned to the uh, some super glue. I did try you um, sticking them down uh, once completed. I left a patch unpainted. Although modern extra thin glue will go through paint pretty well, but they weren't really sitting. There's only a very small contact point on the horse, so I find it's easier to drill. Just use your hand pin vise, drill a hole. What I'd suggest you is first of all put the sounds good. Put the pin in. Drill drill between the bloke's legs. Uh, put your pin in. Uh, sorry, yeah, drill, <laughs> drill your hole in between your, your, the horse, the, the guy's legs. Stick your uh, a tiny bit of blue tack on the saddle. Then put your figure just gently down. This is all before painting. Put your figure down on him. It will leave a little like nipple shape. We're getting all right out around here, aren't we, on some of these things. But it'll show a little nipple shape on the, on the saddle with the blue tack. Get your pin vise or electric, whatever you want to use, and then drill through that and it will give you, it should give you the exact place to 
put your 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 guy. So then put your pin in your your guy's bum. <laughs> yeah, in this type of video, is it? It's supposed to be about Napoleonic, uh, and then stick it then stick it down, uh, and that works. But I do use super glue uh, for that. Super glue has its pros and cons. It will fasten them, but it can be brittle if they get knocked hard. But if they've got a pin in them, uh, and the super glue's already gone down in through the pin and everything, it, it, I don't believe it should be a problem. Uh, and I do. I've tried to move them very slightly. If, like sometimes the horse riders are leaning very slightly in the stirrups as they're doing whatever they're doing. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's what I've been doing. All painted in acrylics, metallics as well, rather than non-metallic. Uh, and that's about it, really. So let's go down and take a look. Right, guys. Thanks for joining me at the bench. Uh, this is obviously one with uh, just this is AK or AK real colours uh, lacquer primer on top through an airbrush. Uh, there's my hole I've put in. There's a slight gap there, but I don't really mind on that because it's covered by the the rider. Um, now, before I, yeah, no, we'll we'll come back to this guy in, in a minute. But yeah, uh, it's the same as you know if you use a rattle rattle can. I prefer lacquer primer. I just believe it sticks to the horses or sticks to plastic or metal a lot a lot better than uh, than the other you know pet brush on primer or primer that you put through an airbrush. Uh, the only the the good thing is I, I enjoy obviously I do scale modeling as well so I've got the airbrush but also the airbrush does allow me it's more economical it allows me to get in all the nooks and crannies most of the time sometimes I miss stuff and have to go back and just put a splodge of brush primer on but it's only like literally a, a splodge right so here's the first guy uh, what I do with these uh, I underpaint them uh, I think that's a painting word uh, so if you wanted something like this if you I know a lot of you don't watch my big <laughs> yeah I'm sledging you you a lot of you don't watch my, my bus painting and stuff but if you did you would you would see that I put uh, textures and stuff into the into the figure. So what I would do is, uh, in this case, I will put a base coat on. Then I'll put a highlight, a mid-tone highlight on. So something that's not too dark and not too light, and I'll put that in the you know the highest points. Obviously, these Perry horses are fantastic for sculpting. The the the, the muscle is absolutely fantastic. Love him. Uh, I will then stipple on one or two colours, uh, a more darker colour, uh, not in the extreme shadows, but in the you know shadowish areas, uh, and a lighter colour on 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 top. And uh, then I will start painting in very, very thin coats over the top. Now, some people will use these contrast. I would say the new are they, but contrast paints and all that. I don't have any of those. I'm I'm not really that fussed in using them, and that's not having a go at those products I'm just happy with what I, the way I do things you know um, I do mix it up and have a go at different stuff but I don't see a real need the way I paint to, to use them it's just more expensive paints I don't I don't need if that makes sense uh, but that's not knocking anybody that does use that that way because it's it's almost a it's almost the same way uh, I'm just using very it's, they're not glazes uh, they they are in part sometimes they're washes I'll, some, I'll, the reason they're not washes is I don't wash the entire horse in, in one colour uh, so they are heavy glazes probably so very thin down paint and then I will go over uh, with different thin down paints of different hues uh, to get into the shadow areas and it will it, show, it slowly blends in the little dots let's see if we can and it'll give a textured look without there being too dotty, if that makes sense. You'll see the odd bit in there, but it'll, it just gives you that textured look. Now this guy's got quite darker uh, black on it, because obviously these bays, again, they have the black tips on the, on the ears. Uh, the muzzles can be like these brownie off-coloured greys. Uh, they can have pink. I've, there's one of these I wanted to put a bit more pink on. I can't remember which one it was now, but... Um, the jackets for these guys when you look at Perry's they're more of a oh like a dark blue and I see that replicated quite a bit obviously because people are following the Perry's uh, 
uh, color chart. But when I looked at a lot of other artworks on them, it's more like of a, a, gr of a greeny blue almost, and that's what I wanted to replicate. So I've gone for that, like a greeny blue, but the bag on top of the Busby, that was a completely different blue almost. It's a very light blue, and I saw that replicated in artwork as well. So he's got a, the bag on top of the Busby is a, is a different blue. Uh, the whites, I don't know if they're showing under these lights. The, the whites, uh, the, these look quite lo quite white under here and they're not. Uh, I've used a, oh, I can't even remember what I've called it. It's like a stone colour as a base on the fur. And um, the reason being I don't want, well one, the fur probably might, wouldn't have been brilliant white anyway. But I've got so much white on here. This one thing that put me off this colour uniform, I only did them because I wanted to do the Busby's. Uh, I would have done a different unit otherwise. Uh, and I can do a different unit because I now ordered a second box from uh, from the same supplier uh, for the same price, which I was really impressed with uh, price-wise. And the way the guy packs them as well. So they'll go in storage ready for a rainy day when I want to paint some more brick shoes ours. Uh, next time I'll do a different unit. Um, but yeah, there's so much white. This is again, I don't know what's coming out under the, when I'm looking at here, I don't know what's coming out under, under the camera lights. Uh, but obviously that's more of a stony color, the, the bread bag. Uh, I've not gone to, I'm not that much of a masochist. I'm not gonna try and put company or troop color uh, numbers on the water canteen. You have to put your own lines in on that. It's just a flat piece of plastic. Um, again, I've gone texturizing the overalls. And different uh, paints over the top of them. The same with the, uh, is that the great coat? Uh, the, yeah, just just different different colours. Um, and again, whites. I was off track there when I whites. Uh, again, colours. Again, color. These have white, white um, piping over white collar and cuffs. Which is always a bit problematical. So again, I've I've changed the whites around a bit to, uh, and the same with the cross belts. Just I've used different whites to, to to show different things, just to break up that. You don't, you tend to find if again I'm doing these to a fairly high standard. Uh, these will be up for sale. Should anybody want to uh, contact me through the, uh, uh, what you know, channel description? There's my email up there. Just drop me a line if you fancy them. Uh, Obviously, if you're going to do a load, you're just banging them out for for getting units on your war games table. You can just use one colour white. I'm, you know, it's I'm not preaching. I'm just saying this is how I do things. Uh, but if you do want to, if you do want to do to a, a better standard, um, try mixing your whites up. So I've got warm whites uh, going from a like a beige type of, but it's dark sand, which is one of my usual go tos. Uh, the same that I used on the on the woolen uh, throw over the saddle um, but they're warm whites bait so it's like a yellowy bait going up from a yellowy color to a, to, a, to an ivory uh, whereas the uh, the white on the collar and cuffs is deck tan uh, and with silver gray and things things like that and then I have gone for a, a pure white around the, the piping in places uh, just to try and raise it up a bit the sword knot Sorry, there we go. Sword knot, that is again a different, so that's sky grey and silver grey on top and panzer uniform white. So they're all just uh, they're all just um, slightly different. The police one was stuck down really well because like, I did the flick test on it <laughs> and uh, before I painted him and one flew off. <laughs> So that was really well stuck down. So that's actually be, had to be super glued in the end. Well, I painted it off. I painted it on a piece of blue tack and then restuck her. Um, so yeah, that's our one guy. This is our other darker horse. Again, I've done it so that uh, I've used very thin paint, so it's going into the base colour of the horse. Um, and the one I was looking at, it, did, it wasn't so heavy. I've mucked up the uh, the horse in different parts. 
Uh, I probably should have made maybe the reins a bit darker or the tack a bit darker maybe. I've done it more on this one which I'm hoping won't uh, won't show up too much difference. But uh, yeah that's about it really. The only, so the only thing I would have liked to have seen was I know they've got a lot of heads but I have seen them do it on other ones. I wish they'd have done say some shouting you know these guys are thundering along with sabres out and they've all got the same stony look and it would have been nice if they'd have sculpted some you know they've done so well sculpting the, the, the horses it would have been nice just to see I know they've given us a load of heads so that's I know I'm being churlish but it, I would have liked to have seen just some some you know just shouting type poses and things like that just to break the faces up a bit Again, he's done with all the same type of work, just different colours. Uh, the I've used different metallics and a few different inks. Uh, uh, that's not rust on the. He's not looking. He's not. He's not looking after. I've just tried to do some reflections on the using metallics. So that's that. Now we come to the problem child. Uh, with this little fella, I, I. Pick two off of the pile, obviously all pre-primed, and uh, as you can see, the work in progress. He's still got to have a muzzle done. He's still got to have a blaze, white blaze put there. Uh, he's got to have a glint put in his eyes. If you notice, what will set your horses off is if I don't know, you can see, see the glint in his eye there. That's not the white. That's not the side of the pupil. It's it's actually a glint in his eye. Um, puts a dot of pure white on there, but a small dot. You can always repaint it. It's not not a lot of because most horses you don't see the whites of their eyes. Uh, but if you put a glint in, so he's got to have a glint on that. Uh, as you can see, most of it's uh, base colours, dark sea blue, because it's got a nice greeny look to it. Uh, saddle blankets done, textured as you can see. Um, now I don't know if the sharp eyed there isn't a prize for this. Sorry. Uh, the sharp eyed among you. I've got really into this. I'd found the colour I wanted. I thought, oh yeah, that's nice. We've got some black knees, uh, socks, white socks. Uh, done the, the dark grey uh, um, hooves. I haven't done the the uh, horseshoes yet. And towards the end of the night, I'm sitting there looking really this really satisfied with how things are going. And then it suddenly flashed into my mind. Ah, you fool. And if you've noticed, I'll, I'll use the unpainted one next. Can we see a glaring difference? Some of you are going screaming at the thing and some of you are just saying, no Gav, they look like horses to me. Except for he's grey. Well, the carbine is missing on this one because Gav, yes, now the penny's dropping on many of you. Gav has painted the trumpeter's horse this lovely bay colour. And I have not got the heart to repaint that as a grey. Uh, by the way, white horses don't really exist, they're all just a form of grey horse, so we call, call them all grey horses. Uh, I'm not repainting him. Four and a half hours later, no, well, say four hours on this because I haven't done the rest of it yet. Well, three and a half hours, four hours, I don't know, whatever long it's taken me, and we've still got, we've still got probably about an hour and a half to go on him. I am not doing him grey. So, I'm now going to have to, I don't think, I'm not going to go chobbling something out this horse blanket or great coat, whatever it is. Uh, I should know these things, shouldn't I, as how, many, how much of Napoleonics I do. Uh, these come with a, a scallop out so you can sit your your musket in and you can, you can obviously bring the leather strap around and underneath. Now, he's also missing I would have thought that the trumpeter would have had pistols, but obviously not. Uh, but that little lump there, they're pistols uh, in holsters. And he hasn't got them either. So, I think the only way I'm going to have to do it, if I can detach one at all, because I've well and truly put uh, Tamiya Extra Thin Glue, which melts plastic into plastic. That's what it's there for. So... I'm hoping one of these, not on this guy, I'm just going to go forward and paint him, and, you know. But I'm, the next two I do, I'm going to have to see if I can remove a carbine. 
I didn't really want, I may have to chobble some out, I didn't really want to. Um, and then I'm probably going to pin it. I don't know yet. But that was an app, well, you know, one of those moments where you say, I thought, that's a really nice colour. I've enjoyed doing that. Brilliant. That's one of these jobs that, you you know, you get a smile on your face when you, you put it down. Only to get completely deflated a few seconds later when I realised I'd painted the trumpeter's horse. Oh, dear. That's the problem with me. See, head problems, I don't have the concentration you guys have. I've got the concentration to, to paint it, but I don't have concent... Unfortunately, with the way my head goes, I don't have <laughs> much more concentration. That's why I fall down on my, my scale modelling a lot because reading instructions and things, it's ridiculous. You know, as I say, your, your head's all over the place, like bouncing around like a squash ball. Oh, well... <laughs> It was a fun paint job anyway, and as I say, it's now just going to be, you know, carving something out, and oh dear, that's some ruined paint work ahead of me, never mind. Huh, right, whinge over. So, they're the, they're the two, can we get in somewhere in frame, Gav? Two painted, they're going to get varnished literally in the next half an hour, I'm just going to make a brew and crank up the airbrush. I'm going to varnish all of my, uh, all of those French Napoleonic infantry I've done in peri-plastic. Uh, varnish these pair, and then these pair can go on a base. And I'll, whether I, I don't think I'll actually, I'll stick them to a base just to, obviously on, on one base they're a lot, they're, they're easier to store. Uh, but I won't actually base base them until I've done the entire unit, I think, because I'm I'm bound to run out of tufts and get the wrong colour. You know, I just we want some harmony on the bases. And as I say, we've got one guy, horse complete. Well, he's not completed, is he? Because he hasn't had a muzzle and his horse and his uh, horseshoes done. But muzzle, glint in the eye, horseshoes, uh, brown base. Um, then I'm just going to go around the horse tack. So that's the leather one last time uh, before we start messing with him. Yes, I am going to paint the the entire thing and then mess with it I oh, know masochist uh, but I've managed to get myself out of situations before so I'm sure I can get myself out of this one uh, the only thing I've yet to decide is whether I stick up get a couple of bits of spare plastic and stick them to the horse and make some tiny little butts not butts but you know little uh, where the barrels of the pistols going so we'll see anyway guys Thanks for stopping by and taking a look. Uh, I really do appreciate it. So just remember, guys, <laughs> you put a big T on the base for trumpeter or something, it might help. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> um, but, yeah, lovely, lovely figures. I, I will say the horses needed a bit of filling. Uh, but, again, it, it depends. I'm throwing a lot of time at these. I'll never get the money back for the time I'm putting them in for them. It's just, it helps my head. I enjoy doing it. And somebody will get a bloody good, <laughs> cheap, decent paint job, whoever buys them, if they get, if they sell. But um, yeah, uh, they they need a bit of filling. As I've said to you, I think I've said to you before, I've just got some milliput, roll it into ultra thin little worms, cut those worms, you know, into like five mil lengths, whatever it takes to get through. It might take one, you put your one length in. If you haven't got any rubber uh, silicone uh, clay shapers, which you can get off eBay for a fiver, for the, just make sure you get the small ones, not the giant ones, um, and just push it in. But if you don't, a cocktail stick will just do you just as fine. And then just wipe it in with an old paintbrush uh, with either IP. I use IPA because it... Uh, that's the alcohol that because it evaporates quick but you can use water as well smooth it in it's, uh, that's your main crack there well not crack when we're talking about you know but main gap that's the word I should say uh, there's a big gap as you can see runs down there put your majority of your filler and rough it up like the sheepskin about here because this isn't really seen as you can see by the riders it's not seen at all then there is a, another there's obviously a fairly decent gap on the belly I do it to you can still see this I mean I'm not trying to get rid of a seam as if I'm you know doing a seam on an aeroplane uh, that's good enough for me you ain't going to see it um, but uh, I still feel that 
and then there's a bit just here as well seems to be where it likes to have a bit of a seam as well uh, this bit here uh, but not as much so yeah so as you can see these have been underpainted you can see it close up see the texture uh, underpainted you could get rid of more of that if you wanted to but I'm quite happy with that I want the texture I want it, it's again it's something you either like to see or you don't you know but uh, a bit of texture in there uh, in this case in these cases and all of these I've used ochre I believe uh, or golden brown as well uh, and I've also used play brown I believe which is a bit harder to see because on top of the coats the base coat that I've put on but it just gives it a few extra dots in in darker areas you won't see that so much especially when it's it's but it just adds that tiny extra bit of texture in all right there we go I hope that was a help to anybody that fancies doing it that way but as I say if you do do it that way you can't cut corners with it, it, it will take you uh, a few hours to do, um, at least three hours I would have thought uh, per horse. So it's the type of thing if you're happy like me just to spend the time because you want to spend the time and you enjoy painting to that level then uh, you'll get that result. Uh, and I'm not saying this is some ultra fancy paint job, I'm just saying I'm happy with what I've got there it needs tweaking a bit here and now I don't paint a lot of cavalry although that's changed now <laughs> I've got a box of French Hussars to do after this and then I've got that box I probably won't do another cavalry unit I've got the British Hussars as well same box but I'll do Chacos and a different unit on those and I've got some more cavalry coming in as well uh, but a smaller scale so thank you very much for stopping by I'm waffling again aren't I well, I'm Gav. This is my this is my channel, and this is what I do. Uh, coming up, uh, I've been promising, or even threatening, even if you're not into it. Uh, I've got a couple of unboxings. Uh, I'll do one anyway of one in seven hundred uh, post-war uh, Royal Navy ships. I've got a Type Forty Two destroyer, and I managed to bag the first time I've won a bid on anything in years. I managed to get a Type Twenty One, which I've wanted for years. Uh, and they both fought for, they were done for the 30th anniversary of the Falklands campaign. Um, so uh, I've got, I'll show one at a time and I'll go into those in great detail. I keep threatening you with the Panther Dio, one day that'll surface. Uh, yeah, we'll have obviously the French Napoleonics are coming up uh, probably now. What is it? Uh, so they doubt you'll see them either. You might see them for the weekend or for Monday, Tuesday next week. Um, and I've still got them samurai to finish. I've only got two. The Normans and the two samurai got one completed and uh, one two thirds done. Uh, Norman, two two single Norman blokes halfway done. Yeah, you know, I, I, I go around like a butterfly and at the moment I'm really enjoying doing these caval cavalry and that's where I'm putting my, uh, my energies at the moment. Uh, oh, and I've got a, an update on HMS Kent, uh, which should be up hopefully the weekend if not the weekend again early part of next week that's the one in 350 scale a type 23 uh, frigate look after yourselves uh, thanks for stopping by and taking a look next time i do a video of these i might do two at a time just because i'll milk it milk the videos uh, or i might do a few more i've no idea yet but um we'll wait and see but wish me luck with <laughs> with uh, converting a nicely painted horse uh, and oh, that's a point then I'm going to have to clean up the other one that I take the thing off aren't I the, the, the carbine off I'm going to have to fill that oh my life really Gav look after yourselves and we'll catch each other soon on another video